Hey, what's going on everyone? Today's the 8th of January of 2024. We're going to talk about a fraudster right here. You guys can see his face right here on my screen. Here he is. This particular individual has conned victims, according to this article, to paying him more than 500,000 pounds in a Ponzi scheme. Now, this particular case occurred over there in the UK, the United Kingdom. Now, we have seen prominent cases of individuals getting other people's money, telling that they're going to invest it, that they're going to get high returns in exchange for their investment. In the end, all goes belly up. Here is another situation. It just doesn't happen in the United States. It also happens across the world. Look at him. That's his mugshot right there. A fraudster who conned his victims into paying him over half a million pounds has been described by the judge of the court, the judge, as the most fundamentally dishonest man that he's dealt with during his whole tenure of 40 years of being a judge in a courtroom. Isn't that crazy? This is how conniving this dude is. Even the judge saying that this man just lies so much. Does it remind you of somebody? Just think about it. You would have to be mentally unstable for a judge to come through and say this man, literally nothing true comes out of his mouth. He believes in his own lies. Daryl Evans is his name. He has been jailed for a total of what well, sentence for a total of eight years. So he's going to be locked up for at least eight years, maybe a little bit less because of the crimes of him frauding his close associates with this Ponzi scheme. Now, this Ponzi scheme that he ran lasted, as you guys can see the next sentence here, was between 2013 and 2020, seven years. So he ran this big lie, this Ponzi scheme for seven years. That's usually how long it takes because if you guys don't know what a Ponzi scheme is, a Ponzi scheme is a fraudulent investment scam okay that promises high rates of return with little risk to the investor it generates returns for the early investors the ones who get on board first and they see from their statements that they're making money but they think they're making the money legitimately but they're not because the ponzi is where the initial individual who is grabbing the investments is taking the investment that he already received from new investors and putting it on the first original investors accounts in a ponzi scheme the money from new investors is used to pay the original investors creating the false impression of a profitable business or investment these schemes require a constant influx of new money so david or daryl excuse me will have to continually find people that he can take money from in order to keep that Ponzi going forward. Apparently it flopped in around 2020. When it becomes difficult to get these new investors or when a large investors want to cash out because they need the money, that's when the Ponzi usually collapse. Just in case you didn't know, Ponzi schemes is named after a person a man named Charles Ponzi. He became infamous for just using, utilizing this technique right there. Okay. You guys can see right here in this sentence, he convinced friends and acquaintances to make high value payments, which he said he will put into investment schemes on their behalf. But in, in reality, look at the next sentence. He was out of work and funding his own lifestyle. Why do people get caught up with these individuals? What is the main focus that draws people to individuals like Daryl to give him their money so that he's supposedly supposed to invest it? Is it trust? Does he look like an individual that looks trustworthy? Look at that. Is that somebody that you will give your money to? Or does he have a cunning sense of words that makes people give him money because he knows how to talk with no backing, with no justification to prove that he can actually invest for people, but he can run a good game. There's a lot of people in the world that acts just like him. 
and who can legitimately take money from you and you will think you're doing a good thing. You think you're you're taking your money that you have in your account, your retirement account, and you're giving it to him because he has spoken up such swell words that he can bring back a return in such a small amount of time. Now, when you go to this article, this is from Wells Online. Men steals 377,000 pounds, but this Yahoo article said it was 500,000 pounds. So I don't know which one is right. Is it 377,000 pounds or is it 500,000 pounds? He also refuses to tell the police where the money is. This is how crazy this dude is. He doesn't even want to tell the police where the money is. Now, if you go to the Yahoo article, they said that he spent it funding his own lifestyle. So that's probably why he can't tell the police where the money is. A conniving con man. Look at that. That's what the article goes on to say. Stole 377,000 pounds from friends and associates with bogus promises about investments and big returns on their money. Many of the victim entrusted life savings. Look at that. They have given this man their life savings, their retirement accounts, pensions, equity from properties for with Daryl, who held himself out as a trustworthy financial advisor. Wow. There it is right there. Trustworthy. I wonder what he did to gain their trust. What worth did he give them to say that? Yeah, let me go ahead and give you my pension. Let me give you all of my life savings because I trust you. He even continued to offend after being arrested and questioned by police by making himself the executor of a will and paying the deceased estate into its own bank account. That is why he's conniving. He even placed his name as an executor on a person who has perished in charge of their estate and used the money from that individual's estate and put it in his own account. Crazy. Now, Daryl, 62. He's supposed to go to prison for eight years. He has been the, this is what the judge told Evans, like he told him while he was in the courtroom that he was the most fundamentally dishonest person he has ever encountered in his four decades, 40 years as a barrister and a judge. He didn't even show no emotion. This is Daryl Evans, the defendant. He did not even show any emotion for what he's done, the pain that he's caused to his friends and his associates. Be careful who you call your friend. The court heard some of the victims gave the defendant tens of thousands of pounds and believed he was investing their money wisely. With some people handing over their savings, parts of their pension pots, or were releasing equity from properties to invest. The court also heard two brothers who are in their 70s. These two brothers are 70 years plus. That's how old they are. Well past the age of retirement. They took a keen interest in the investment Evans said he had made on their behalf. And guess what? As many people would do with their money, they want to see how well it has been performing. These two brothers would, as this article states, would spend hours each day tracking their performance. When their supposed investment took off, the pair believed they became millionaires. I believe Evans cruelly allowed them to hold. But it was all a lie. So they came and it's like, Daryl, I just checked my account and just off the investment that you that we gave you, we are millionaires now. And he'll turn around, Daryl will turn around and say, yeah, you sure are. Knowing that it was all a lie. Look at Daryl. Be careful. Be careful who you trust, especially when it comes down to your own money, because these two brothers in their 70s lost off of their money leading led to believe that they were millionaires now they're 70 well past the retirement age what else can they do to accumulate those money how can they get it back can daryl pay it back does he have the money locked up somewhere that he can actually pay these two brothers back what at least a fraction of what they gave him
The court heard some of the victims recommended evidence to family and friends as he seemed to be getting good results. And they have not only been left out of pocket, but also feeling guilty that their loved ones were con too. When you see someone that you know, that you, you're real close with, like you got a homeboy or a homegirl, you guys kick it with a lot, you trust. And let's say that you got in on an investment and you guys, and you, know, you check your investment periodically and you see that it's going up crazy. And you're like, man, this dude has to be legit. So let me go ahead and tell my homegirl, my homeboy, and tell him, look, dude, how much you got? Yeah, let's grab some of that. You need to put in this account here because this man knows what he's doing. Look at my account. I was here and now I'm all the way up to here. And then your friend that you just in, induced also gets in. It's just the posse. They put their money in and then they begin to see their account go up. And then word of mouth goes out to the next friend. And then the next friend puts money in and they see their account go out until in the end. It all comes down. When the scam came crashing down, Evans claimed there were no records of the investments he had been making for his clients because the police had destroyed or concealed the documents. Now he's putting blame on the police. He also claimed many of the investors had given him money knowing he was putting it in a caravan park that he was developing. Even though he did not own the park and the council had refused planning permission for such a scheme. I bet he didn't tell them that that he didn't even own the park first of all he didn't own the land and then the permit he couldn't even get permission to even develop the land for the caravan park he has been found guilty of 27 counts of fraud and theft he doesn't have any previous convictions Jim Davis for Evans said there was little he say by way of mitigation as the defendant had maintained his innocent throughout the proceedings of course the barrister said they were his instructions that there are now no funds just Paul Thomas KC that in the 40 years he had been practicing as a barrister and sitting as a judge in a criminal courts in the criminal courts he had not come across anyone as fundamentally dishonest as the defendant he said Evans had systematically conned people out of money he knew they could ill afford to lose and knowing that he could not or did not intend to repay them. The judge said during the trial, Evans had stood in the witness box and lied with a fluency that at times was almost breathtaking. Wow. He got caught up. The people who invested in Daryl got caught up. Even the judge had seen this. He lied with such a fluency that is unbelievable. As he sought to avoid responsibility for what he had done and cast aspersions on others, pointing fingers, putting the blame on someone else. Like, well, if they didn't listen to me, then they wouldn't be caught in the same situation. They wouldn't have lost their money. That's what he's trying to do during this court case. Now, the judge said he would send his evidence on the basis that he was refusing to say where the 377,000 pounds have gone or what had been done with it. Evan was sentenced to eight years in prison and will serve up to half that period. So he's going to serve at least four years in the box. At least four years. So it may not be the full eight, but definitely according to what this article reads, it's going to be about four years. Now, how can you protect yourself from these schemes, from these individuals? You have to take more than what they say. And rather than you give out your full life savings or take out equity into your home, into these Ponzi schemes, into these investments, just chip off a little bit. Nobody's telling you go gung ho and put it all in. Let it ride. No, if you don't, if you don't know these individuals like that, and if you're not seeing any profitable gains from your initial investment, then you, you're pretty much safe. Watch what these people say with their words because the words can also be utilized to tear down and make you feel good. But in the end, it was all lies. Be careful. 
always get proof always get proof because people that look like that is always out to get your money and they don't want to work you have worked hard for your money individuals like him don't want to work they're trying to find the easy way possible to get the money to sustain their own lives all you have to do is learn as pointed questions questions that would make someone really sit down and have to research and if they cannot give you a sound understanding of what they're trying to say in their in this investment then you already know that is not real especially let me give you an example like if you have somebody who you've known for a while and let's say that they're in a garbage business right let's say they pick up trash let's say that daryl over here is a trash man okay and he approached you one day and said hey i got an investment idea wait hold up already you know the situation is kind of lopsided because you're a trash man what do you know about investing like that oh i know this guy oh okay so now you got an acquaintance that put me up on this investment that's even more questionable like you need to definitely ask the questions I right, what's going on with this and then you need to ask your friend like okay give me some literature you know give me something to read give me something to see oh I ain't got that another strike another thing that you can put in the back and say oh, yeah this, this doesn't seem legit there will always be something that will make your mind say uh, that doesn't seem legit that doesn't seem right he doesn't have literature you're a trash man who all of a sudden is in, is is in, interested in this investment what type of investment is it can i speak to this person what knowledge history are they even experts in this particular investment do they know what they're talking about plain and simple people like daryl it's walking the earth right now out trying to con people out of their own money we have to be careful of people like Daryl because these people will continue to walk the earth many of them are being born every day and we have to keep our eyes open and prepare ourselves and shield ourselves from when these people come our way because they will come whether it's going to be face to face Given the technology with the internet, AI, it's going to be done over the internet, through platforms, through social media, through live stream. Be ready. Questions, comments, let me know. Make sure you maintain the profitability. And as always, trade different.